But uh, if we uh, if we move on to today, uh, so like I said, sorry it's late. Got into quite a lot of debate on Twitter um, today, um, and it all started basically after the um, after the the Sunday supplement um, program this morning, which I, I thought was I thought was wonderful. Uh, I thought it was really, really well sort of versed, and you had Jason Burt, Jonathan Northcroft, uh, and you also had uh, Andy Dunn of the Mirror uh, was on there. And the first segment was all about the incident at Stamford Bridge, which let's face it, all we all know. Uh, I'm not going to go into too much detail because we've all read it, we've seen it, and it's just vile and it's just absolutely disgusting. Um, but uh, yeah, they. Um, it was quite interesting because Jason Burt was quite quite emotional in the way that he spoke about the violent and disgusting nature of the attack and abuse and venom and vitriol and everything else. And then Jonathan Northcroft again came out and he said the sim very similar things and sort of, you know, uh, it's got no place in the game and, and it was just disgusting. And uh, and then Andy Dunn made a really interesting point and he, and he, he turned around and he said, that uh, uh, it was about time that the media started to take a little bit of ownership and responsibility for the fact of the way Raheem Sterling has been treated in the past. Now, some will say, well, too little, too late. And, and I agree to a certain extent. But, you know, we, we like I said in the videos with Jonathan Northcroft and John Dillon, uh, John Dillon, is, well, we can either turn around and just ignore it and just say, oh, we're not interested. Uh, and then the debate sort of finishes and that's it. And then we'll just be, uh, we'll, we'll, the anger will just build up within ourselves and we'll never trust them ever again and we'll never get into dialogue and all these types of things. Or we can say, well, at least that's a little tiny step forward. And he did say, you know, we have tried to, I'm not sure what his exact words were, redress the the issues um, of the articles that have been written in the past, which suggests that he knows that uh, Raheem Sterling has had a very unfair treatment by publications and, and journalists in particular within football in the in the UK. Um, Jonathan Northcroft um, turned around and, and said that uh, he feels that there are uh, something very dark uh, is at work in the articles that have been written in the past about Raheem Sterling and he was pushed by Neil Ashton who um, who basically said, uh, you know, what do you mean by that, dark? And, and he turned around and he said, institutionalised racism, um, overt racism, if you want to call it that, which is, it's good that they're using that type of language. It, they're, they're not trying to skirt around the issue and I think it's right. Um which then led on to um, the reason why it's been late. And I've been on Twitter for large parts of the day getting into some heated debates with um, two presenters of TalkSport. And that is um, Matt Rushton, who presents Soccer AM uh, and does the Sunday morning show and several other shows on um, TalkSport. And his Sunday morning sort of sidekick, Barry Glenn Denning, who writes for the Guardian newspaper, sports journalist, and other articles, um, and they started off at the big, fairly beginning of their show. They were talking about the Raheem Sterling thing, and they started off in a sort of you know, of course they were sort of you know basically saying that uh, what was said was disgusting and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. But it quickly turned from something that was quite serious and challenging into. As they do on their show naturally, it became very sort of light-hearted, which I didn't think personally was the right approach, considering the nature of what happened last night. And um, they started going on about the fact that uh, uh, they felt that the way social media, people on social media get outraged at things is way over the top and... Then they turned around and said, oh, look, we've had a a, 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 a a listener who's posted in, why don't we change what was said last night to two adjectives and a noun uh, and replace it with that? And then they started making light of it by replacing it with some ridiculous sort of words as if these people... I mean, I know that 
Max did say when I got into a debate with him that he does a lot for the Kick It Out campaign and um, and that's fair enough. We weren't trying to say, me and several others, well, lots of others, were trying to say that they were being racist in their comments. What we were saying is that it was in bad taste, we felt, to bring up and, and make it light-hearted, which, you know, to be fair, and, and to make it balanced, others disagreed with some Toon fans and Liverpool fans said, "Oh, you know, you know, humour and is mocking at them and thing." But I still, I still didn't feel it was right that they were making, you know, light of um, something that is horrible, nasty, and vile, and should never be in our sort of um, the game that we love. Um, so we got into a massive heated debate for hours on end. So they were actually on the show, and I actually posted during the show. I said to him, "Have you actually read Max? Have you read uh, Rusty uh, Raheem's Instagram post that he's made?" And got a reply back while still on air. Few few minutes later, sort of saying, "No, I didn't. Apologies, I've not seen that. I've only just read it now." And that's what we're trying to say with with the whole backstory, and then Raheem posting that this morning, and then this coming out about them making sort of a light-hearted jibes about it. But we got into this debate all afternoon and. Um, Max took it quite well I mean he was quite objective with it and said look that's not the way that we meant it to come across Barry Glenn Denning on the other hand um, just pathetic replies just wouldn't have it uh, didn't like any criticism or critique or challenging or I mean he was rude to one old guy whose son he's a the, the type of guy Tom he's uh, constantly on Twitter about City and things but he's actually a Newcastle fan um, and his son is a Manchester City season ticket holder. Um, intelligent guy, um, you know, no, don't use foul language or anything. And Barry Glenn Denning was effing this and blah, blah, this and calling us thick and cloth eared and we don't this. And he's so rude. Uh, it was unbelievable. And it, it just went back and forth. So, Barry Glenn Denning, Max Rushton, if you want to come on the show and you want to challenge us here and you want to discuss it, in an adult way without using foul language Barry if you want to discuss it then feel free contact us um, you well in the end you turn around and said oh I'm muting you and uh, well you know block me mute me do whatever you want I'm not bothered it just shows the lack of intelligence um, that you have and supposedly as this big sort of sports journalist writing for the Guardian uh, fact is you just didn't like being challenged and would not accept um what we were saying uh you wouldn't listen i posted the link to the talk sport um show edited clip that was on talk sport about 30 minutes worth but there was bits and pieces of what you actually said but so come on our channel come and chat to us debate it i said to you if you think if i if i end up being wrong i'll apologize so far i've got nothing to apologize uh it was backed up by plenty of people on twitter you just wouldn't accept it. Got rude, got personal. There was absolutely no need for it. Um, but anyway, uh, so yeah, come on the channel. Uh, so that was that. And, you know, that sort of uh, took up a bit of time uh, this afternoon. Uh, but tried to engage with these people. Um, but it wasn't just that. It was that. I then went out. I had to go somewhere on a personal errand and Kate, on the drive back. Um, heard Mark Saggers on the lunchtime show after, after them. With Dave Kitson, who sounds like an intelligent guy, you know, he speaks very well, but then turned round and said um, something along the lines of, uh, you know, these players, um, young players, need to be careful about their social media accounts. And to a certain degree, I think, you know, he maybe have a point with, you know, what some of the stuff that they post is a little bit ridiculous. But he started going on about the fact that they post pictures of their houses and their cars and their this, that and the other. It, people can get jealous. And so what? You're saying you're not allowed to post anything like that anymore now on social media because somebody might get jealous and start hurling racial, you know, aggressive abuse at you because you play football. Um, but it wasn't just that. He turned around in his next statement and said, I actually went back, he said, in, through Raheem Sterling's Instagram account. So, you know, why do that? But he clearly wanted evidence of this. He said, I went all the way back, but all of those were deleted. But, in his next breath, he turns around and says, um, yeah, but, you know, he's deleted all those pictures of um, him saying... Uh, 
this is my house, this is my car, this is my bathroom, this is my... Well, I thought he deleted all those, so how do you know what was in his Instagram account, Dave? So, again, it was this little twist of trying to take it down one route, trying to justify it, but in the same breath, contradicting yourself by coming up with that. You know, instead of just turning around saying, you know, sometimes I think they need to be careful of, of, of being on social media and what they post because they can be jealous people out there. Um, and then somebody else had posted the fact of uh, there was a big debate with Piers Morgan, you know, going on about this ridiculousness um, of, uh, you know, uh, somebody had posted about Tosin Adarabayo in the article where the Daily Mail had said Tosin um, earns £25,000 a week uh, and yet he's bought his, his parents a £2 million house and he's not even played one Premier League game and it's disgusting and he gets into all that and he's trying to justify Piers Morgan the fact that, well yeah, he's bought, he's done this and he's bought this £2 million house and he's never played a Premier League game so I replied back to him saying, hold on this Carl Short and his wife won £165 million on the lotto they never earned that, they just got lucky same as Tosin Adarabayo, he's actually earned that money, getting to the stage where he's got a professional football contract. These actually won it on a on a lucky dip or whatever, and 165 million and spent how many millions on a, on a house? But nobody vilifies them for it, which I sort of say, well done. I wish it was me, but he's got this nasty, nasty sort of undertone. I mean, it is such a hypocrite. This is coming from somebody who was involved in the scandal around hacking a dead girl's phone. And he's got any, any, you know, cheat to come on social media and start criticising anybody. I mean, it's just it, pathetic. And then he calls out people saying, well, why don't I have you on the GMB show tomorrow morning and talk about this? I mean, he's, he's, he's vile. He's as vile as those people who made those comments, in my opinion. Certainly the way he talks and things things he posts on social media. So it's been a day of sort of gathering news and trying to interact, engage with these journalists and people on social media to try and get a handle on what everybody thinks about this Raheem Sterling thing. You know, we're all obviously mortified, disgusted, and it's vile, but... To actually try and get a balanced view of what are some of the other people, and I started interacting with uh, Jonathan Northcroft again on on social media, uh, on Twitter, and about it, and he posted quite an interesting article this morning. Um, so yeah, I mean it's about time, and I, I think if we go back to the beginning, and I think when I said about Andy Dunn, I think journalists are now starting to realise that they have to be held accountable for playing a part, a part. In this whole tirade and sort of vilification of Raheem Sterling and his career and everything that he's done, and it's coming to light now, and it's a shame it's got to this point where, you know, fans now did what they did yesterday in that manner, um, and I think it's a snowball effect. And Steve Tudor, who, who writes articles for Unibet uh, and the Daisy Cutter, actually got into a debate earlier, uh, an hour ago saying that he felt that Liverpool uh, fans, this started, and I totally agree, this started when Raheem Sterling wanted to leave Liverpool. And I totally agree, that is when it started. And some Liverpool fans gave him loads of dogs abuse, um, coming back saying, no, oh, it's the media's fault. And uh, the media play a part in this. So I posted a picture, and there's a picture if you go and see it. Um, I'm not going to put it on here, purely because I don't want to sort of, you know, show any more of these images. Uh, of these particular fans, but there's an image of Raheem Sterling in a Liverpool sort of uh, tracksuit top, like he's warming up in front of, uh, I don't know where, it's the cop or somewhere else, but there's a bunch of 20, 30 Liverpool fans, one of them holding a child in his hands. And if I said to Steve Tudor in a reply and posted it to him and said, if you were to mute that video of last night, pause it and change the colour of the clothing, this actual image is almost identical to what you would have seen last night in the abuse of Raheem Sterling. This is this this was Liverpool fans against a Liverpool player. So for me, I agree with Steve Tudor. That's where it started. It started with the fact that Liver uh, that Raheem Sterling wanted to leave Liverpool. So anyway, guys, uh, this is Andy from Man City Fan TV. Uh, like I said, it's it's lots of debate on Twitter. Uh, have your comments below the video. Don't forget one more thing, um, and this is quite important. Uh, 
after the Mares video that we did the other night and got loads and loads of views and we got into loads of debate with Algerian fans and things like that and uh, yeah I mean it was great interacting with you but uh, we got accused of basically not showing Mares en enough respect or airtime or talking about him or blah 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 so what we're going to do, me and Ray spoke about it, what we're going to do is we're actually, after every game, we're going to do just a sh very short video and it's going to be called Mara's Watch. And it's going to be totally about Riyad Mahrez for those fans who think that we don't, we treat Riyad Mahrez differently. And we're going to just review and critique his performance, be objective about it. And we'll do that after every game, whether he's played 15 minutes, 20 minutes, 90 minutes. Um, and we'll do this video, we'll post it on the website and... Uh, Tomorrow I'm going to do episode one of Mara's Watch, and that's going to be after uh, about the Chelsea game that's just happened. So have a look at it. Give us your comments below. Uh, you know, if you want episode two and you want us to continue it, or you don't like it, or you still think that we're not being objective and blah de blah de blah, and we're still Arab haters and racists and whatever else, then comment below the video. There's not much more we can do about it. But I want to say a massive thank you also to the. The majority of Algerian fans who have turned around and said, ignore these absolute idiots, uh, you do a good job. And we're right behind Manchester City. We're not just Maris fans, we're Man City fans as well. So um, don't forget, subscribe to the video, click notification. Uh, that way, when this video, Mara's Watch, gets posted, um, you'll get notification. You can have a look, you can comment below the video. This is Andy from Man City Fan TV. Christmas is coming and we'll see you soon.